Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Sinners Painting video. So the idea for this video is to look at where you started and see where you are now. There's some people that have some time on me when it comes to painting miniatures. Um, I started in January 2019. It has been a year since I picked up my first miniature and, and painted it. And that's what you're seeing on the screen now. So in this video, I took a similar model, another sequitur. And I wanted to paint it again using all the skills and techniques that I've learned over the past year. This isn't, you know, a tutorial video, but by all means, you're welcome to follow along. So a little while after the Corpse Cart collab, Casey asked if I wanted to be part of a bigger collab he had an idea for at the end of the holiday season. And I was like, yeah, definitely. So the collabs with about 12 other channels on YouTube. And I really liked his message about, you know, everyone starting somewhere. And I also think it's cool to just look back and see where I started personally. What? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> All right, all jokes aside, um, this is the model that I chose to repaint for the video. It's another sequitur. And I did your basic Zenithal highlight on them. And then I went back in with Vallejo's dark skin tone and just hit the pieces that are gonna be gold just so I could give them kind of an undershade. So I'm starting off here with a base coat of Vallejo's Tinny Tin. I thought it would be a really good shade color for the gold that I'm going to apply to the armor. Here I'm just hitting all the spots where the Zenithal was completely black for the most part. And here I'm going in with the main color for the armor, which is a mixture of Vallejo's Hammered Copper and Glorious Gold. I was still looking for that warm gold color like Retributor armor, but I wanted to use Vallejo paints just because I got them and I wanted to test them out. So here I'm going in with my first pre-wash highlight, which is Glorious Gold, and I'm kind of just doing an edge highlight um, over brush in certain areas. So this last pre-wash highlight has a little steel mixed into the gold and I'm just mainly hitting the edges. So here with Vallejo Metal Color Steel, I'm going in and doing all of the actual silver metallics. I really love this color. When you hit it with a, a matte varnish though, it does tend to dull it quite a bit. So what I do is I lay this down and then put a wash over it and then I'll matte varnish and do my final highlights over it. Here for the inside of the robes, I'm doing some wet blending and feathering. I took cold gray and black and made a gradient on my wet palette and I'm just picking different colors from that gradient for different highlights and, and shadows. This is my first coat, I do a couple more. This is just establishing where I want the transitions to be. This does take a lot of back and forth, so if, if you're trying it out for the first time and it's not looking the way you want, don't get discouraged because I mean, like I said, I do a couple coats. I, I went back and forth between highlights and shadows and trying to get the blend perfect and then feathering in some more colors.
So for the main blue on the robes, I chose Night Blue by Vallejo, and I'm basically putting this in all but the highest highlights on that Zenithal. And here I'm just putting the blue around the base of the pauldron because I'm trying to establish a transition for later on. So now I'm just going in with Night Blue and Imperial Blue, and I'm just blocking in the highlights. So the transitions are going to be pretty stark right now until I go in and do some feathering. So at this point I have done a little feathering and I'm going in with a layer of just imperial blue now for the highlights. I'm not really too worried about how it looks right now because I'm going in with a filter later to try to blend everything in. And then our final pre-wash or pre-filter highlight in this case is some imperial blue mixed with some bone white, just a little bit of bone white. And here I'm just hitting the highest edges on the robes. So I remember when I painted my first sequitur, I was following the Games Workshop video tutorial and I put the Rakarth flesh down on the robes and then I slapped Agrax Earthshade all over it and I absolutely hated it to the point where I just kept the robes or the the tabard, whatever it is, I just kept them Rakarth flesh. So here I'm trying to switch it up. I'm doing this the same way I did the blue. I'm just going in with my shadows first and then coming in with the highlights and doing some feathering. So I think Rhinox Hide has to be one of my favorite colors for doing leather. Mixed with Mornfame Brown for highlights, it just looks awesome. I know that traditionally sequiturs have black gauntlets, but I just want to switch it up and do some brown leather on this guy.
So for the little potion bottle on the side, I uh, got to play with some more scale 75, some sky blue. That's going to be my base color for this. And here for the highlight, I'm just hitting the edges of the potion bottle itself. I want it to kind of look like it's glowing. And here I'm trying something a little different for me. I'm using some contrast paint as a shade. I just want to see how the skeleton horde looked over this color combination. And it was thinned down with some contrast medium and I think it came out awesome. I might do this from now on. I haven't really had a chance to play with many contrast paints, but the few experiments I've done, I really like them. They're really versatile. So for the leather, I'm just doing plain Agrax or shade. It's not thinned down or anything. I am being careful on the flat surfaces because I don't want pooling, but it's just your basic shade. And for all the silver, I'm using a two to one mix of Null Oil and Drakenhof Nightshade. I just wanted to give the silver a cooler tone since that armor is so warm. For the shade on the gold, I did Reiklin Flesh Shade, Agrax Earth Shade, and some Lamia Medium. I felt that if I just used straight up Reiklin Flesh Shade, it might make it a little too warm. So I added the Agrax Surf Shade to darken it down a little bit and then Lamia Medium to thin it. Here I'm using another contrast paint. It's a Kelly and Green and I'm using that as my shade for this little potion bottle. So this is actually the filter I talked about earlier. It's a homemade Gillum and Blue recipe. And I'll link down in the description to the video of the guy who remade all GW's glaze recipes since they discontinued them. It's actually a really cool video. But I'm using this as my filter to tie in all those layers together. So for the highlights, I kept it pretty simple. I'm just using the same highlight shade that I used before the washes, and I'm just hitting the edges a little bit, trying to just give it some more contrast and some more texture.
so here it is the side by side um, I definitely went a little more grim dark on the newer model I tend to lean more towards that style now that I've been around for a little bit and seen different styles I definitely like the darker and the grittier kind of look I feel that I've become a lot more clean in my painting I have a better understanding of color and technique I've definitely put a lot of time in I try to paint every single night and I think if you want to progress you need to put in that time I think if there's a technique out there that intimidates you just do it just grab a model and try it because you're never gonna understand how the technique feels to do until you try it I mean and you're gonna fail maybe not but probably gonna fail and you'll do it again and you'll just keep getting better and out of nowhere you'll be like oh wow yeah I can do this no problem you know you want to try NMM go try it you want to try loaded brush go try it just try all these different techniques and get first-hand experience I mean watch all the videos you can and take in all that information and then try it for yourself as always I appreciate you guys for watching and I want to say thanks to Casey for putting this whole thing together and thanks to all the channels who took part in this collab. They're all genuinely great people and they do a lot of good for this community. So definitely go check them out. You can find all the links to their channels down below in the description. If you like it, hit like, hit subscribe, and definitely go check me out on Instagram. I'll see you next time.